G'day Internet, welcome back to another video, and to what is currently a pretty empty big space, but there's a reason for that. I've been building this. Now, if you follow me on Twitter, you'll know how long I've been working on this thing. Um, as a little bit of a backstory, I've been wanting to build an arcade machine for quite a long time, but generally due to space, time, lack of appropriate tools, etc., etc., it's just something I've never gotten around to. But this particular story, like many good stories, starts with a Facebook Marketplace post. Trawling through Facebook Marketplace as you do, I came across an ad for a nearly complete uh, flat pack arcade machine for $50. I couldn't get in my car quick enough uh, and was running across the other side of town to go pick it up. And even while I'm driving over there, I'm like, where am I going to put this? When am I going to have time to do it? Don't care, $50, I'll find the time, I'll find the space. Fast forward to oh, about a month or so ago, uh, I was on leave for work, so just some, took some long service leave, just to have a bit of a break, and I thought this is an opportune time to finally get started on the arcade machine, and I did. So, like I said, it was a near complete. The things that were missing were as follows. Uh, all the screws. Um, the main front fascia that goes over the screen, which ended up not being a problem for reasons we'll discuss later. Uh, and the totality of the instructions was this exploded diagram, uh, which once you kind of got, once I kind of got my head around it, it started to make sense. Now, one thing I didn't do was film the entire build process of this cabinet, mainly because it was over the span of about two weeks. Uh, this camera here only films 20 minutes at a time, which is a whole nother thing. Um, and also, this initially was only ever meant to be kind of like a me project, if you get what I mean. Um, this was something that I wanted to do off camera and all the rest of it, but as I got going on it, uh, and I had taken a whole bunch of progress photos uh, as I built it, I figured it might make an interesting video as I put it all, well, actually put it all back together um, because I've pulled a lot of it apart for the sake of this video. Um, so in saying that, let's actually start putting it together and we're gonna start with the screen. Now, before we actually put it in, I should probably explain something. I'm fairly certain that this cabinet was originally designed to have basically a naked CRT tube installed and then all the guts for the display actually mounted down inside. The reason is, is they're not there anymore, um, is that there's, there was actually four huge um, mounting lugs in each corner, and they're kind of the size that you would expect to see on the ears of a CRT. Um, excuse all the really rough cutting around it. The reason is this. At the beginning of this project, I actually got my hands on a very nice 21-inch uh, CRT uh, Trinitron monitor and it was going in here and I cut it all out and I made all the bracketry and everything else, got it in, it was working, and then the next day it died. Uh, so given that all those old 21 inch CRTs are actually starting to get a bit old um, and it was semi-likely that it was going to happen again, uh, I decided to go the flat panel route. And what I have, is a Dell, I think it's an old 2410. It's a 16 by 10 uh, ratio 24 inch that fits in here really nicely. Now to mount it, um, I'm just using a Visa mount. This is the side of it here uh, and the matching one is on the back and it simply uh, hooks into these two sleeves here and there's a locking screw, which we'll get to in a minute, uh, in the top. But this should just simply drop into place. Uh, 
as long as I've got it at least reasonably centered. Right, we're in. But that's only a small part of it. This is all still wobbly and all the rest of it. The next bit we've got is this actually bit of wood that goes in at the bottom here, uh, which holds it uh, steady in kind of this direction. So let's put that in. Right, so this goes in, in theory, about there. That looks about right. Right, there's one other little bit that goes in down the side. And the reason is this, this screen has those USB ports you may have seen that kind of half stick out the back. And what that means is that they hit, they sit flush against this backboard, but then there's nothing on this side and it tends to kind of wobble like this. So I have somewhere here, this small piece here. And if I'm lucky, I can get it in from the front. And it goes here and it just simply holds it out a bit. And that stops it wiggling that way. Now, remember I mentioned that locking screw that's on the bracket? Well, as you can probably imagine, that's not the most fun thing to get to at the moment. Uh, and I literally have to look through the air vents on the back of the machine. So if we turn this around, we have some air vents. I have a big gaping hole at the back where the CRT used to be. Uh, and I literally have to get my phone uh, use uh, the torch on the back of my phone, a small screwdriver with a bit of blue tack on it and kind of get it in. So expect some bleeping of um, uh, some swearing. All right, here we go. Nope. I should point out the first time I did this, it probably took a good half a dozen times. So it's threading in. Nope. I think we're in. Right, we're in. I only took three goes. 
All right, now I can plug in the DVI cable. And power, which is this over here. All right, got it. The next thing we're gonna put in is the front panel for the door. Um, this is the two coin buttons and the power button for the PC that we'll be putting in in a minute. So this should just go in here and we've got some nuts to go on the back. So as you can see, I've already got a bunch of cables here. Uh, these two run back to the joystick uh, compartment, which we'll get to in a minute. Uh, and this is the wiring for uh, the power button for the computer. There's four wires here. Um, two are for the 12 volt illumination uh, and the other two are wired into the momentary touch switch, which is already on the computer. So that just plugs in there. Luckily, I was smart enough to label these. That should just lock in, and same with that one, right? So that's the front panel uh, buttons all sorted. So before we fill the lower part of uh, the cabinet, I should probably point out a few things. Um, the kit came with a proper little IEC power fuse switch thing, which you can see kind of up the back, kind of there. Uh, and all I've done is simply wired in a regular power board with a circuit breaker switch uh, into the back of that. Now, the back of the IEC connector, um, it's all heat shrinked and stuff like that, but I do need to build uh, a small cover uh, to go over the back of that because, um, as much as I would probably ask people why are you poking around the back of the arcade machine when you got electrocuted, probably a good idea for me to cover that. You can also see the small amplifier that I put in. That's just a cheap one from uh, JCAR, uh, which has got some zip ties kind of hooked underneath it. Uh, and it runs up to a set of speakers uh, at the top, which we'll see later on, and then just a regular 3.5 mil stereo jack, which goes into the back of the computer. Speaking of the computer, it's probably the next thing to go in. Um, so this is just a uh, ex-government lease fleet computer, whatever you want to call it. It's a Dell Optiplex, uh, which is more than enough than what we need. Um, that, by the way, is the wire uh, that runs internal to run the uh, power switch on the front of the computer. Uh, and it simply goes in here. Uh, and then we have two reasonably large uh, brackets that I built uh, just out of some aluminium strap. Uh, and they, one goes there and the other one goes there. Uh, for here, we've just got bolts or screws that go through and nuts at the bottom, which is always fun for six, six foot seven of me to get to. Uh, and then we have two bolts that come in from the outside. So we'll just tighten those up. And then we've just got these two USB cables which run up to the joystick compartment and they can simply be plugged in. Uh, and now I need to go digging around the back to plug power and video in. 
Oh, and audio while I'm there. So let's take a quick look at the back of the joystick board. Nothing here will come as a huge surprise. We've got some uh, regular kind of illuminated arcade buttons uh, and some off-the-shelf arcade joysticks uh, all run into a generic USB joystick adapter thing. Um, now, let me be quite clear, this is not genuine Sanwa arcade parts. These are genuine what's the cheapest I can find on eBay and a few extras from JCar, but it does work. So we should be able to bring this in here, just put it there for a second. Uh, let's start with our USB lead. So this is player one uh, and player two. Uh, then we've got our coin buttons. So player one, and these are actually uh, done as the select button on the joystick. So get you in there and you in there. Did I get it the right way around? Yep. Right. Kind of tuck all those back in and this should just drop back in. It's a very tight fit. And that goes in there uh, and some screws on each side. Next, the marquee. Uh, this is simply a light that I got from Bunnings. It worked out really well. It's not stupid bright, so it doesn't blind you when you're trying to play a game. Uh, and it's got three small panels, which kind of gives a nice broad illumination to the marquee. Speaking of, because this is going to uh, probably end up in the tea room at work, because I don't actually have room for it here, uh, I put my faculty's big logo on it. So this is just uh, an image printed, basically just a regular paper, squished between uh, two pieces of perspex. And that should just drop in if it wants to behave. All right. Come on. Yep, and we're in. And then this is simply a panel that gets uh, screwed in over the top with a couple of little trim pieces that I made. Ta-da! So now for the bit that probably caused me the most grief on this entire build, and that's the fascia that goes over the screen. Like I said, the original one was actually missing. Uh, I then chopped and changed between both the CRT and then the flat panel. Uh, and if you remember what I said at the beginning, I was actually on leave from work when I started this, and the totality of my tools is a jigsaw, and a circular saw uh, and really bad carpentry skills. So I started actually making it myself. Uh, here's a couple of early renditions. There's this one here, which is uh, MDF, uh, then vinyl wrapped. Uh, there's this very dusty and dirty one here. I think it had a coffee spill on it. Same thing, uh, except it's actually got the bit of perspex on it. Now. The reason I didn't end up using these is that no matter how hard I tried, I just kept getting all the angles wrong. Now, you just go, it's 90 degree angle, yes, but it turns out that this cabinet isn't exactly 100% square. So every time I did it, I was out and I was wrong and I'd try and hack up little bits of trim to cover my rubbish cutting and all the rest of it. And I just was never, pleased with it. Now, a few people said, yes, but you handmade the thing and that's better. True. But the rest of the machine, because it was a flat pack machine, I didn't build the cabinet, actually looks pretty good. And so this would stick out like a massive eyesore. So after two or three goes at it, I was actually back at work by that stage. Uh, and I have access to the fabrication lab in another faculty uh, where they have a laser cutter. 
So the final rendition was this. Uh, this has been properly uh, laser cut um, out of two pieces of acrylic, one black and one transparent. Obviously the black one has the big hole in it. Um, I did the design with all the screw holes and everything, but it is now a perfect fit. I added a couple little tags at the top to help you get it in and out, uh, and my little instructional sheet here. But that does just simply drop in the front, and it is a tight enough fit that I don't have to worry about screws or anything like that, and it just goes straight in. So all things going well, and it works. So software wise, all I'm actually running here is Batasera. Now I was gonna go into the whole like installation all the rest of it, but instead I'm simply just gonna put a link up in the corner there somewhere uh, to ETA Prime's how to on how to install Batasera to the hard drive, because literally that's all I did. Even with those cheap little USB joystick boards, it just worked. Um, the player one, which is mapped to start, just worked. The coin button down below, which is mapped to select, just worked. Um, the only thing I really had to do was kind of plug and swap around the joysticks a couple of times before it went, oh, this is player one and that's player two. But other than that, everything just kind of, yeah, works. We can simply add some coins. Coins. Uh, hit start, and away we go. I should point out, as much as I love Street Fighter 2, I'm actually not that very good at it. So there you go, that is the arcade machine that I built over the last four weeks, well, two weeks kind of full time and then a few weekends. It's, I mean, it's nice. It's a, what I would consider, it's not quite a full size cab, it's kind of like halfway between a cocktail cabinet and a full size one. But in saying that, I mean, it stands, what? Uh, a meter 60, 75 or thereabouts. Um, and it is, what do we got? 63 wide and including the deck, uh, 92 deep. Um, so it's not a small machine. Um, and as I hinted at before, uh, this isn't staying at home because I simply do not have the room for it at home. Like I said, it was something I wanted to build, but then I've got no idea what I'm gonna do with it. So this is actually gonna go into the tea room uh, at work for people to enjoy, hence the SciTech uh, banner. Um, so I hope people at work enjoy it. I'll get some enjoyment out of it as well. Um, and I think it will be a nice little addition to the social aspects at work. Uh, for now though, that will pretty much do it. If you like the video, click like, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. Uh, you can now find me on Patreon if you'd like to help support the channel, just like these wonderful people just here. Uh, and until then, that'll pretty much do it. And I'll see you in the next one.